Well, hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. But um, as we're going through numbers, I want to go into the New Testament. I want to tell you about um, there was a time Jesus was out and he was with his disciples and he came across the water. When he came across the water, he came um, to a demon possessed guy. Um, and it was running around in the cemetery, okay, and he was just acting crazy. Um, to make a long story short, Jesus casts the demon out of that guy and cat and puts the demons into uh, a herd of pigs. Um, and the pigs run down the bank of the, um, along the uh, water there and jump into the water and die. All right. Um, you'd think everyone would be happy about that. The demon-possessed guy is healed, and the, the demons went into pigs. Jewish people aren't supposed to have pigs, okay? And they weren't supposed to raise pork. They're, so why would you raise pigs if you're not eating pork? Um, but these people were so upset uh, that lived in that area that their pigs died that they told Jesus, please get out of here. Please, please leave um, uh, because, you know, you ruined our pig business. Why are these guys in the pig business? Well, this is an area called Gadarenes. To understand that more fully, we need to go back to Numbers chapter 32 as to why that is. Um, Gadarenes is part of the tribe of Gad. The, these Gad and Manasseh um, decided they were, they were getting close to the border and getting ready to cross into the uh, across the border uh, into the land, the promised land. But they go, uh, you know what, Moses, we'd like to stay here. Uh, we want to live in the border town. We want to live on this side, not go into the promised land, but we want to stay on this side. That decision didn't affect them right away. You know, they were like, oh, yeah, this is great. Our cattle are here and everything. We don't have to fight as much. We have to conquer some of the land, but we don't have to, you know, go into the promised land. And um, that decision didn't have affect them right away, but that caused a, a division with that. And they were the first tribes to get picked off by the enemy, like every time. And then they were, you know, the tribes that fell into sin. So much sin that when Jesus comes along, they're in the pork business, uh, which the other tribes were not in the pork business because they, of course, you don't eat pork. So why would you, you do that? Okay. Um, so this, let's read here today. This is, this. Uh, let me warn you, it's a longer episode because this is, I'm going to cover this whole chapter in um, one episode and it's like 42 verses. All right. Um, so this is how it goes. This is uh, Numbers chapter 32. The tribes of Reuben and Gad, I said Manasseh, uh, it's Reuben and Gad, owned the vast numbers of livestock. So when they saw the lands of Jazer, uh, Jazer and Gilead, were ideally suited for their flocks and herds. They came to Moses and Eliezer the priest and the other leaders of the community, and they said, Notice the towns of Atroth and Dibon, Dibon Jezer, Nimrah, Heshbon, Eliah, Sibma, Nebo, and Beon. The Lord has conquered this whole area for the community of Israel, and it is ideally suited suited for all our livestock. If we have found favor with you, please let us have this land as our property instead of giving us the land across the Jordan River. They're still in the wilderness. They haven't crossed the Jordan River. The Jordan River is kind of the boundary into the promised land. So they're they're getting close to the promised land, but they're not there yet. And they go, eh, we don't really want to go into the promised land. We just want to stay here and not take what God has promised. Okay? It's like if I give you this cup as a birthday gift. And you go, eh, you know what? I really don't want to take that cup. I'm going to just, you, you, you hold on to it, and, and and I'll come and look at it once in a while. Like, what kind of crazy gift is that? Well, that's what they were doing. They were acting like that, not wanting to go into the promised land. Verse 6, do you intend to stay here while your brothers go across and do all the fighting? Moses asked the men of Gad and Reuben. Why do you want to discourage the rest of the people of Israel from going across the land the good Lord has given them. Your ancestors did the same thing when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. After they went up from the Valley of Eshkol and explored the land, they discouraged the people of Israel from entering the land the Lord was giving them. 
Then the Lord was very angry with them, and he vowed, Of all those I rescued from the Egypt, no one has, is, who is twenty years old or older will ever see the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for they have not obeyed my, me wholeheartedly. The only exceptions are Caleb, son of Jephnua, and the Kenzite, Kenzite, and Joshua, son of Nun, for they have wholeheartedly followed the Lord. Let me add in there, too, Moses was still alive at this time, so there's three of them, actually, but Moses would not be going into the Promised Land. Verse 13, The Lord was angry with Israel and made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years until the entire generation that sinned in the Lord's sight had died. But here you are, a brood of sinners doing exactly the same thing. You're making the Lord even angrier with Israel. If you turn away from him like this, and he abandons them again in the wilderness, you will be responsible for destroying this whole nation. Moses is, he's coming down on them, because it looks to Moses like, you jokers are doing the same thing that happened with the 12 spies. When the 12 spies came back and the 10 discouraged the people, um, they were like, no, no, we don't want to go into the promised land. And it looks to Moses like, these guys um, from Gad and Reuben are doing the same thing. They're like, no, we don't want to go into the promised land. We want to you know, just stay here. Okay, it was really a lack of faith. And Moses, he's coming down hard on them. Let's read, keep reading, verse 16. But they approached Moses and said, We simply want to build pens and livestock and fortify towns for our wives and children. Then we will arm ourselves and lead our fellow Israelites into battle until we have brought them safely to the land. Meanwhile, our families will stay in the fortified towns in, we build here, so they will be safe from any attacks of the local people. We will not return to our homes until all the people of Israel have received their portions of land. But we do not claim any of the land on the other side of the Jordan. We would rather live here on the east side and accept this as a grant of land. It's a key reverse right there. We would rather live here on the east side and accept this grant of land. I'd rather you just hold this cup, and uh, and I'm going to look at it once in a while, um, but I, I don't want to actually drink from the cup. Crazy and foolish, uh, but that's what they were doing. Then Moses said, if you keep your word and, at, and arm yourselves for the Lord's battles, and if your troops cross the Jordan and keep fighting until the Lord has driven out his enemies, then you may return when the Lord has conquered the land. You will have fulfilled your duty up for, to the Lord and to the rest of the people of Israel. And the land on the east side of the Jordan will be your property from the Lord. But if you fail to keep your word, then you will have sinned against the Lord. And you may be sure that your sin will find you out. There's that, that phrase people say a lot. Your sin will find you out. Well, it's based right here. Go ahead and build towns for your families and pens for your flocks. But do everything you have promised. So basically, they kind of made a compromise here. Moses said, all right, you can stay here, but you better be going over and fighting uh, to get the rest of the land. Um, and so you know, they agreed to that, and they were, would build pens and, and so forth and stay there. Then the men of Gad and Reuben replied, we, your servants, will follow your instructions exactly. Our children's wives and flocks and cattle will be stay here in the towns of Gilead. But all who are able to bear arms will cross over to fight for the Lord, just as you have said. So Moses gave orders to Eleazar the priest and Joshua son of Nun and the leaders of the clans of Israel. Okay, why did he call those guys and give them the orders? The reason he called them and gave them, uh, told them what's going on is because Moses was not going to be around much longer. Uh, and God had told him, Moses, you're not going to be around much longer. Your, that last battle was your, your last battle. Um, so Moses informed Joshua and Eleazar what the plan was here. Verse 29, he said to the men of God and Re to the men of Gad, not God, and Reuben, who are armed for battle, must cross the Jordan with you to fight for the Lord. If they do, give them the land of Gilead as their property when the land is conquered. But if they refuse to arm themselves and cross over with you, then they must accept the land with the rest of you in the land of Canaan. The tribes of Gad and Reuben said again, We are servants, and we will do as the Lord has commanded. We will cross the Jordan into Canaan, fully armed to fight for the Lord. But our property will be here on this side of the Jordan. 
So Moses assigned the land to the tribes of Gad and Reuben and the half tribe of Manasseh. Okay, so there's another, the half tribe of Manasseh. They divided the tribe in half and they resided there too. So you had Gad, Reuben and uh, part of Manasseh. He gave them the territory of the king of Sihon uh, of the Amorites in the land of King Og of Basham and the whole land with his city and surrounding lands. The descendants of Gad built the towns of Debon, Athrot, Arar, al Hashbon, Jezir, Jagbela, Bethnim, and Beth Haran, and these are all fortified towns with pens for the flocks. The descendants of Reuben built the towns of Heshbon, Elia, Kirtha, Nebo, Baal-Meon, and Sibma. They changed the names of some of the towns they conquered and rebuilt. The descendants of Makar, the um, of the tribe of Manasseh went to Gilead and conquered it, and they drove out the Amorites living there. So Moses gave Gilead to the Mechites, Macarites, and the descendants of Manasseh, and they settled there. The people of Jair, another clan of the tribe of Manasseh, captured many of the towns of Gilead and changed the name of that region to the towns of Jair. Meanwhile, man, uh, a man named Noba captured the towns of Kenneth and the surrounding villages, and he renamed that area Noba after himself. All right, the whole thing is here. I entitled this today Border Town. It's because these two and a half tribes here uh, came, and they came to the, the border, and they're like, mm, you know what? We don't want to go in. We don't want to claim all the promises of God. We don't want to take what God has promised us. We're satisfied with the stuff out here, okay? And that it, it also, that when, when they cross the Jordan, it's also a picture of baptism. It's like you're dying to Christ going in the water, but then you're coming out of that water, and it's like uh, the resurrection, okay? Um, so it's like new life in Christ. And so that's what, what it's kind of a picture of, like, oh, uh, yeah, we don't want to, you know, accept full salvation. We don't want everything God has to offer. Uh, we're just satisfied with this. And it played out all the way up until Jesus' time when those tribes were so far away from the way God wanted them to live that they um, were pig farmers, okay? That should not have been an industry at all. Why would you have an industry of, of pigs when no one's supposed to be eating pork? Um, but they were so um, excited about their pig farm. And when Jesus put an end to their pig farm, they were so mad about it, they asked Jesus to leave, okay? That's a bad deal right there uh, when, when um, you ask Jesus to leave because you care about your pig farm. All right. Um, so, but keep in mind, it, it, it wasn't just all taking place there at Jesus' time. It went all the way back here to this point where those tribes said, you know what? We don't want to go all the way into the promised land. We want to live on the border town. So I encourage you, look at your life. Are you one just, just hanging around on the border town? Or are you going in? and doing all God has for you. I'm Todd. I'm a regular dude walking in the Word, and I'm glad you uh, uh, watched me today, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue our journey through the book of Numbers. Lord's blessing. I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.